Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. I'm doing a very short video series on sharpening in Photoshop. In this video, we're going to talk about high pass sharpening. I mentioned at the top that this is a short video series. I've already done videos on the Unsharp Mask and Smart Sharpen. If you haven't seen those videos, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to a playlist for all the videos in this series. Also, if you're watching this video on YouTube, in the right-hand corner, you'll see a little flag pop up, and that will link you directly to that playlist. Also, I just want to add that I almost always, for every video I do, put all the gear and settings I use to take the photos that I'm using in the video. So in the description below the video, always check out the gear I've used and the settings I used to take the shot. Now I mentioned this is our video on high pass sharpening and this will be the last video in this series. I've been receiving emails, probably about three or four emails over the last month uh, from folks asking me to do more Photoshop videos. So if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see uh, it done in Photoshop, let me know in the comments below. I mentioned many times that Photoshop is destructive, so you must take precautions to make sure that you're not doing anything to the original layer and ultimately to your image that you cannot undo. So in this case, we have the background layer and I wanna do the sharpening on its own layer. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer by hitting Command or Control J. Command on my Mac, Control on your PC. Now we have this duplicated layer. Now I mentioned that uh, if you want to come back in and do readjustments after you've done sharpening, if you want to go back in and readjustment, that you could convert that layer into a smart object. Unfortunately, with high pass sharpening, you cannot do that. The reason is we're going to convert this, uh, we're going to basically desaturate this layer. And when you desaturate the layer, you cannot convert it to a smart object. So, that is a downfall or a bad thing, I guess, about high pass sharpening. So you got to nail it first try or you're going to delete that layer and start over again. So we're going to desaturate this. There is a keyboard shortcut with a Mac. It's shift command U with a PC. It's shift control U and you'll desaturate that layer. If you'd prefer to go up to the menu system, it's image adjustments and it's down here. Desaturate. All right. So we have the black and white image now. So we're going to apply sharpening. To do that, go up to filter and high pass sharpening isn't under the sharpen menu. It's under the other menu. So we'll go there, high pass, and you'll see as soon as that goes on, we get this gray scale. So it's 50% gray. And I've mentioned many times that really all we're doing when we're sharpening the image is we're adding contrast to edges. And this grayscale shows us exactly where that sharpening is being added. You'll see some of it is darker gray and some of it is lighter gray than that 50% gray. And those are the areas that are getting the sharpening. And you'll notice that if I take radius all the way to 0.1, there's no sharpening at all. We have a uniform gray there. And as I move it up, we start to see those edges come through. And this is how you control how much sharpening you do to your image. And you can see if I go up to 108.9 pixels, we're sharpening, like over sharpening, right? We're getting haloing. We we're sharpening our skin and everything. And of course we don't want that. Now, like the other forms of sharpening, we have a little preview window here that you could drag around. And you'll notice when you click on it, the gray scale turns off and we get just the regular desaturated layer. You also could just click on the image somewhere and you'll uh, center that on the preview window and we could zoom out a little bit if you prefer and then get an idea of what the sharpening will look like. And there's also a preview uh, checkbox here, but when you're using it, it, um, it isn't as effective obviously because it just basically takes the high pass filter off. And so you're not really seeing anything, uh, I guess, pertinent. So what you probably have to do is kind of get used to this um, high pass filter and get an idea of what good sharpening looks like. So I'm going to leave it at five pixels and we're going to click OK. So we're going to apply it, the sharpening. 
but you'll see we still have this grayscale. So what we have to do is change the blend mode. So we'll click on the drop down for blend mode and we'll go to overlay. Some people prefer soft light. You could use whichever one works best for you. I prefer overlay. And when you click on it, um, and I'll zoom in, I'll hit command plus a couple times. And I'll turn this off now, this layer. And you'll see there's before sharpening and there's after sharpening, before sharpening, after sharpening. Now I'll zoom back out. I'll fit it to screen by hitting command zero. Of course, that's control zero if you have a PC. Now what you may prefer <coughs> to apply high pass sharpening would be to uh, change the blend mode before you actually add the high pass filter. And now let's do that. We'll get rid of that layer. I'll hit command J to duplicate this layer. We're converted to black and white. I'll hit shift command U. Again, that's shift control U. Uh, if you have a PC, now we'll change the blend mode to overlay. And you can see it kind of looks funky. This is why some people prefer soft light because soft light looks a little more realistic. So we'll try that. We'll do soft light. So now it's still a little funky, like there's before and there's after, but it's a little better, right? Now we'll go up to filter, uh, other, high pass, and we'll add the high pass filter here. Now you can see that this screen is showing you kind of a, a good rendition of the image. The preview box over here is showing the grayscale. And when you click on it, it's showing that black and white again. Now again, we could center it, let's say on our eye, and maybe I'll zoom out a little bit. But the kind of the cool thing about this preview window is when you're doing it this way, uh, that is, you change the blend mode first and then applied high pass sharpening to the layer that already has that blend mode changed. If you sharpen the image, let's say we're going to over sharpen it. All right. So we have an over sharpened image and you could see even the grayscale turned into, uh, or the gray image turned into this. But if I click on this and look at it, that's the unsharpened image. So it's the grayscale version of the unsharpened image, and that may help you better A, B it. So you get an idea whether or not you're over sharpening. So I hope that made sense. This preview win window basically is showing you the gray, or the gray, I want to say grayscale, the gray version of the image. But when you click on it, it's showing you the unsharpened version of the image in black and white. Whereas over here, you're seeing the sharpened version of the image. So maybe that will help you better apply the sharpening and get kind of a good before after because if you turn a uh, preview off here you get that kind of funky look that the blend mode produced with the the um, desaturated image so we could leave it at 4.5 pixels let's say around there and click okay so we have it and our blend modes already changed now um, again, you don't usually want to apply sharpening on a portrait to the uh, person's skin. So we would add a uh, mask and we'll go down here in the lower right hand side, click on the little mask icon and make sure we're clicked on that mask. We'll get a brush, hit a B key for the brush. Make sure we're painting on, in black. Make sure that black swatch is in the foreground. If it isn't, hit the X key on your keyboard to swap them. And then we'll get a larger brush by hitting the right bracket key. And I'll just come in here real quick. And what we're going to do then is painting black on the mask. We'll remove the sharpening from wherever I paint. And I won't do the whole thing, but you get the idea. You want to make sure that it's still on her hair, her eyebrows, her eyelashes, her eyes, her lips, and her clothing. Uh, other than that, you'd probably want to re remove it from most other places. Uh, so... We'll come in real very quickly. You get a smaller brush and come in here and remove it from up in here. I'm hitting part of her eye lashes. Don't want to do that. But you get the idea. Then you could look at the mask to see where you painted by holding the alter option key and that's alt if you have a PC option if you have a Mac and clicking right on the mask. So you could get an idea what it looks like there. It looks horrible. But you get an idea. Now we could zoom in, command plus a couple times and then do a before after and you can see it's sharpening her hair and her eyes and her lips and her clothing so that's that we'll hit command zero to zoom back out so that's high pass sharpening my favorite 
but a lot of people hate it, so don't be afraid to hate it. If you don't like it, use one of the other two, the Unsharp Mask or Smart Sharpen. And this concludes this mini-series of videos on how to sharpen an image in Photoshop. Again, if you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see me do concerning Photoshop, leave them, leave a comment below and let me know what you'd like me to do. And thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.